In this video, you'll learn two easy methods to create non-rectangular controls. Non-rectangular and skinned controls are very popular in multimedia applications, but programming these types of applications has traditionally been quite tricky. In Windows Forms, non-rectangular controls are trivial to create. Our first step is to create a new project. The first technique we're going to use is based on chroma keying on a bitmap image that we developed earlier. I developed some beautiful concept art for a smartphone, and I saved it as a simple bitmap file with its background color set to pure green. We're going to set the background image property of the control we want to customize, in this case the main form, to this bitmap. Non-rectangular forms typically have their own method for moving, resizing, and shutting down, so we're going to set the form border style property of our form to none. Finally, we're going to set the transparency key property of our form to the same bright green that is the background of our bitmap image. Now let's add a control to our form just so that you can see that this strange looking thing that we're going to be running is an actual program. Well, actually button one is a pretty darn good name for this control. And now let's add some behavior to its click event. And short of generating a telephone tone, we're just going to put up a message box saying that the button has been pressed. And that's all there is to it. Now let's start up our application and see what we have. Let's minimize VisualStudio.net to get a better sense of things. And when we press the button, Sure enough, we see that this is a real program with real behavior behind it. The fringe you see around the application is an artifact from my paint program. If I'd been a little better with my selection handles, you wouldn't be seeing that. Now, this technique that we've just illustrated is an extremely simple way to create a non-rectangular form. However, there's a limitation. The transparency key property is a property of the form object not of all controls. So now we're going to demonstrate another technique, which is just about as easy and which can be used for any control, whether it be a form, a panel, or a button. This technique is the key to creating a fully skinnable app. So I've removed my beautiful concept art for the smartphone. Instead, we're going to be building up our shape programmatically. It's more typing, but on the other hand, we have much more flexibility. We aren't going to be needing this transparency key property, so we're going to set that to none. I want to keep the button just so that we can continue to show functionality, but let's move it to a little more central spot on the form. Let's open the code editor and open the region that the forms designer generates. As you can see, the form designer generated code actually marks with a comment exactly where this type of initialization work should be done. Our first task is to create an object of type graphics path. And to do that, we're going to have to use the import statement to make visible the system.drawing.drawing2d namespace. Now that the namespace is visible, the editor no longer marks the graphics path declaration and instantiation as an error. We're going to create a variable called third width, which represents one third of the width of our total form. And now we're going to build up our graphics path by adding graphic primitives to create our custom shape. As you can see, we can add anything from a simple line to arcs, bezier curves, and complex polygons to a graphics path. It's true that this requires hand coding, but this is exactly the type of coding that one expects to put into a library and to make available to end users via some sort of skinning API, 
controlled by some text-based configuration file, perhaps something based on XML. We're hard-coding our custom graphics path just to demonstrate the technique. We've defined two ellipses, each defined as one-third the width of our form and as high as the form. A region represents a filled shape. One of its constructors takes a graphics path as its parameter. And all Windows Forms controls have a region property, which takes a region object and which defines that control's shape. By assigning our graphics path to the form's region property, we're going to see this, admittedly rather ugly, form. The region can actually have non-contiguous areas, as we have here. But when we press button 1, you can see it behaving just like a normal application. The noticeable stair-stepping in this version of the application is caused by the fact that I'm recording this at a low screen resolution with a low color depth. At higher resolutions, this application, well, still looks pretty ugly, but at least it looks smoother. The process of building up a graphics path and creating a region using that graphics path and assigning it to the control's region property is a little more complicated, but gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility.